Hello and welcome to another Tabletop Ramblings Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game Battle Report. Today's battle report pitches 650 points of Mordor against 650 points of Rohan. And this is part two of the Escalation Tournament preparation. So the two armies here are the original 350 point forces. But for today, we're gonna add in the extra numbers to bring them up to full power. If you've seen the previous video, you may remember that this army is led by the Witch King. And he has with him six Black Numenorians, six Moranans with spear and shield, a Warbrider with shield, and three Trackers. Now his army has been expanded. He also now has with him Grishnak. And he has a shield, although it's not modeled on just yet, nor is he quite finished being painted. And he has three Black Numenorians, three Moranans with spear and shield, a war rider and a tracker. Then finally, we have Gorbag with shield, a very similar warband of three Black Numenorians, but this time four spear and shield Moranans, a war rider with shield, and the tracker. Then there's also a Black Numenorian banner. This is in Gorbag's band, because I'm not 100% sure if with the escalation rules you can add things to previous war bands. If so, then that banner will go in with the Witch King, but if not, it's not the end of the world that he's in with Gorbag. That is the 650 point Mordor list. Leading the Rohan force is Theoden. He, in his initial 350 point list, has with him eight Royal Guard with Throwing Spear and two Riders of Rohan with Throwing Spear. They're all mounted and Dernhelm has the Throwing Spears. And that is the Riders of Theoden Legendary Legion. And the Warbands are split dead in half with four Royal Guard and one Rider in each Warband. Now, making up the 650 point list, we've brought in Aemer and Gamling. Aemer has throwing spears and Gamling has the banner and they both have just two riders of Rohan with throwing spear. A potential issue with this escalation list is that all of the uh, troops just about are in that first batch, which means that they can't be divvied up into a more even spread. However, it does mean that uh, the two initial warbands are nice and powerful with then some support from Gamling and Aemer. We'll soon find out if, uh, if spreading things out would be better or not. This is the battlefield for today. Some scattered trees, but generally quite light on terrain, except for the center, which has some ruins, and then importantly, a statue, because today's battle is hold ground, where that central objective, the statue, is the all important point. That central objective is worth three points if at the end of the game you have more models than your opponent within six inches of it. It's worth five if you have double and seven if you have triple. There's also one point for wounding the enemy leader and two for killing them and one for breaking the enemy and three for breaking them while being unbroken. And as always, victory points are counted up at the end of the game. And this game ends on the roll of a one or two after one force has broken. Deployment for this scenario is Maelstrom of Battle. So the forces will enter in their move phase. As such, we'll roll for first turn priority to see who is going to be deploying first. And it goes to good, so Rohan will be deploying. Excellent. 
end of goods movement and all of the force has been able to come in on this northern edge. It cost AMA a point of might, but it's paid off as all of the group have been able to stay together. Dernhelm rolled a one, which was unfortunate. She's not coming on and is not wanted to waste a load of might. So she is staying off the board. Not the end of the world to have a, a sizable warband off because then she can react next turn to what Mordor do next. Evil's movement and the Witch King has come on. He's rolled low and been put right at the back by Rohan. And then Grishnak rolled a two, which would have meant that again, Rohan putting him somewhere nasty. He'd have probably ended up down in this corner, ready to be smashed a bit away from the Witch King. So he used might to drop it to a one and didn't enter the board. And then Gorbag rolled a one as well and also didn't enter the board. So currently it is just the Witch King's Warband against most of the Rohan force as none of the Witch King's reinforcements have arrived. That's the end of turn one. Let's roll for turn two priority. And once again, it goes to Rohan. End of turn two movement. This is how the board is looking. The forces have all arrived now. It cost Eowyn and Merry both a point of might. With priority, they decided they couldn't wait forever and burnt those resources, knowing they'll probably get them back from the banner anyway, to join the fight as quick as possible. In Evil's move, they've advanced. And then Grishnak has finally come on in a fairly sensible position, but Gorbag on a two, evil have rolled very poorly for Maelstrom, have deployed at Rohan's request all the way up in that far corner. Gorbag did debate spending the might to either drop it back to a one and take the gamble again, or to burn two and come in on the flank, but it's, uh, just didn't seem worth it. So he's gonna make that long slog and hopefully arrive before the battle is completely over. It looks like Mordor are probably gonna be fairly outnumbered and outgunned. We're doing things slightly out of sequence though because Evil's move isn't quite finished. We're gonna do the Witch King's spell. It just makes more sense to do it on camera. He's moved up and he's going to do a two will black dart onto Aemer's horse. It goes off on a five. He does have the crown for a reroll, but he doesn't need it. It goes off there on a five. We should point out as well that the Witch King is three might, 16 will, and three fate. Although of course, having just spent two, he has dropped to 14 will. So that's gone off, rolling to wound the horse. One, two, uh, not, a, not a one, two or three. It's a three plus to kill the horse. Oh, and it's a five. So the horse takes a wound. Aemer does have horse lord and he's got three points of fate. So he's going to spend a point of fate to save his horse and saves it nice and easily there. So that is just a point of fate off of Aemer. Probably not the world's greatest trade. Two will off the Witch King. And uh, with hindsight, probably should have gone for Theoden's horse. Theoden only has one fate but uh, Aemer is much more deadly mounted. So swings and roundabouts there. Do comment below if, uh, if you would have done things differently. Into the shooting phase. And these three Rohirrim have moved half. And they are gonna take their shots into this tracker. 
and the tracker's up there if by some uh, miracle that tracker survives. Oh, only one hits though. So on that tracker, strength two on defense, three is fives. And the six kills that tracker. First blood to Rohan. Incensed by the death of their fellow tracker, these three trackers here are going to shoot into Aemer's horse. They are just in range. They have moved, so they're hitting on fives. And one hit, so up or down. It goes on the horse. And then it is a five to wound. Unless it's an armoured horse, we'll double check that actually. Uh, it's a five, so if it's an armoured horse, it would be a six. But on a normal horse, it's a five. Let's double check what kind of horse Aemer has. Luckily for Aemer, he's riding an armoured horse, as you can tell by uh, the imaginary armour. So that is a six to wound. That five doesn't quite cut it. So Aemer is fine. That's the end of the shooting, end of the turn. So we'll roll for turn three priority. And again, it goes to Rohan. End of turn three, and this is how the board is looking. Rohan have just pushed up, leaving couple of riders to take shots, but generally everything pushing up. With Theoden tucking in just behind this wall so that no hurls could take him off his horse and the rest of the heroes forming up. And then Aema planting himself right in front of the Witch King, daring him to charge. Even if the Witch King were to transfix him and charge and go in and still kill Aema, he would then die the next turn, realistically, as everything would pile onto him. So it is just not worth it. And also, because of the uh, stonework in the way, if Aemer were hurled through that line of every hero, he would just stop at the stonework. So just an irritating placement there from uh, Aemer, stopping the Witch King from really doing anything other than, of course, throwing a black dart into Thaden's horse which we'll do in a moment. Again, slightly out of sequence, but it just makes it a bit easier to film. For Mordor, they've just charged up. The uh, slowest warband on Earth without March up there, which is uh, the theme across this whole army. Brishnak and Gorbag being the captains with strike rather than March. But Gorbag and the banner slowly plodding up with the archer there, moving half for a cheeky bow shot. Here, the Warbands have linked up and are just pushing towards the centre. With these three trackers again moving half, they do have a shot on one of the riders. First off though, it's good priority. In fact, no, before we uh, do the shooting, again, it is uh, slightly out of sequence, but the Witch King is going to use his Black Dart on this time Aemer's horse. And he's just going to use one dice to do it. Can he make it work? Not on a three, but with the crown, he gets a free reroll. And another three. He's not going to bother burning any might. He is just going to let that slide. So no spells go off. And then, as we say, it is good priority. So we'll do some shooting. And we've got these three bows. They can all see various guys along here. Only these two can get Grishnak. So we'll do the two on Grishnak first. Uh, they have not moved, so both hit. The five and the four, needing sixes to wound. Oh, nearly. Nearly a wound there. And this chap, who can't quite see him, is just going to go after a random and miss. These guys are out of range with their throwing spear, but Aemer isn't. And he is in range of that very daft war rider who thought about hiding and then decided he'd pop out to uh, be a bit of a cavalry blocker. And he's going to get a throwing spear in his face. Oh, it hits up or down, hits the warg and kills the warg. Oh, dearie me. So his throne rider will do that now. He's fine, but he is no longer on his warg. So we'll find him a dismount in a moment. But first, we'll do evil shooting. So we'll do this 
tracker over there, just shooting into the only chap in range and missing. We then have these three and they're gonna fire into that guy. They can only see the one. There's only one hit because they have moved. They had to shuffle out the way of them. So up or down, up. But that means needing a six to kill. A two, nothing there. So much more effective there, the shooting for good than evil, although still not too many casualties at this stage. That's the end of the shooting, end of the turn. So we'll roll for turn four priority. And again, it goes to good. End of goods move and the heroes have just formed a roadblock to stop the forces of evil from getting in with all the riders there making a, uh, an anti-flyer formation. The Witch King can't get in behind anybody because of the way the bases are all placed. Not really ideal Rohan tactics hunkering down, but uh, when that is worth so many victory points and they've reached it first, they need to defend it, which has led to some very bizarre cavalry antics. Not entirely sure this is gonna end well. Um, if you'd have done something different, again, do comment below, but I'm not too sure what Rohan can do here. Evil are about to move, but first off, we'll do the Witch King. And he, with just one dice, is gonna try and compel Theoden forward. Theoden is just slightly tucked behind the two, uh, more tanky heroes, so that the Witch King can't just charge him by himself. He would have to engage at least either Aemer or Dernhelm as well. But if he gets compelled forward, then he uh, he's going to die, basically. So we're just going to do it with one. He has got three wills, so it's not really worth wasting a load of will when he's probably going to resist it anyway. But you never know. A two is not enough, so we'll re-roll with a crown to a four, so it has gone off. So it forces Theoden to spend will. Now, does he just spend one and risk it? Probably burning some might, or does he leave himself with just one or, or even no might, uh, will left to resist later? He is, uh, he's gonna spend two will to resist it. No, he's gonna spend one, because he's got enough might. There's quite a lot of might in the list. Will is possibly more important at this stage. Oh, and it's a two. He wishes he'd spent a second one. What would it have been? Oh, it would have been free as well. That's so heartbreaking. So two might off Theoden to resist that. That was uh, was definitely the wrong call there. But Theoden has resisted it. He is down one will and two might. End of the movement phase and evil are swarming towards the centre. Gorbag and his band have charged forward yet again with the Warg Rider charging in to uh, that Royal Guard. The Bowman still advancing half. He's got a shot onto some of these Royal Guard there. And evil just spreading out to put pressure on here and around the two flanks with the Witch King. Having gone in, if we can see around his daft wings, into Dernhelm. She has only got one might, although Merry has regenerated his might, we forgot to say, but last turn she ended her move within three inches of the banner. So at least Merry has managed to uh, get an extra point of might. So she and he, they in fact have been charged by the Witch King and two Black Numenorians and the dismounted Warg Rider, who are backed up by three spearmen, have charged into Aemer. Not Theoden, he's not engaged. That guy charged in first so that he was able to uh, ignore Theoden's control zone as he was charging into Aemer, who he got uh, into first. Just to keep as much pressure on one hero at once, that is how movement is looking. These three did edge back in case they got uh, double charged by 
Prishnak and Co, although they have played it much more safe. So there will be some shots as these three who moved. We'll fire them into the trackers as they are the easiest to kill. Only one hit. Will they kill? No, not on a one. There is this throwing spear into a Black Numenorium, but he misses. And then there's two throwing spears up there into Gorbag. We'll come around a little bit so that we can see a bit better. So those two into Gorbag. One hit. But no wound there, just the shield keeping him alive. Then this guy can see through just onto that Black Numenorian there, but he misses. And that is all of the shots for good. There's this lone tracker, and he is going to shoot into one of the Royal Guard. In fact, he's going to go for one of these that are a bit more threatening. He's going to go for that chap there. And miss, he's been very, very good at rolling low so far. Then we've got these three trackers just shooting into those three. Three shots, three kills. Here we go, Mordor. Well, not quite, only one. And let's see if it can do any damage. So up or down, and we'll just go after the guy in the middle. It's down, so it's on his horse. And it kills the horse, so there we go. He is dismounted. We'll roll his throne rider. He's fine. We'll uh, just put that next to him to uh, mark that he is going to be on the ground so that we can find him a throne rider in a moment. That is all of the shots. We'll find him a dismount and then we'll come into combats. In the midst of all this chaos, the cat at the bottom of the statue interrupts this video to say, please like, comment and subscribe. And if you could help him get those birds down, you would be forever grateful. The rider has been dismounted then and he has the throwing spear and shield and a bow. It's not often you see that model as uh, realistically, who can be bothered making such a daft model that you're never normally gonna use. So we'll go into the combat phase and Theoden is going to call death. That allows Dernhelm to call a free strike, Aema to call a heroic combat because you never know. And importantly, Theoden to call a heroic strike as well without wasting might, just in case the uh, the Witch King wins the fight and barges Eowyn and Merry back and jumps on Theoden. At least he won't be defenseless. So we'll go into the combat phase. The first combat then in the shadow of the Fell Beast Wings is Eowyn's heroic combat. It's free, so why not? And you never know, he might get lucky and manage to kill those three from a standing start. So we'll let Evil set the bar. Oh, they only get a five. So then Aema also gets a five and wins it on fight value. And the Evil banner is all the way up there with Gorbag. So no re-roll there for Evil. Aema is wounding all of these guys on Five. So he's just going to prioritise the guys that cause terror. And if he gets three five pluses, he'll get to charge. Ooh, fairly close. He's killed one of them. He is just going to go after one of the Black Numenorians. Probably this chap in the middle. There, we'll back them away. So he has uh, successfully held the line there. And then we'll do, we'll do this fight up here. It's the War Grider on Royal Guard. It goes to the Royal Guard, nice and easily there. Five to kill the rider, no. So the War Rider backs away. He was never really hoping to do much. It was more just uh, so that Gorbag's band could at least get in and do something. And then it's the important fight. It is the Witch King against Dernhelm. They are both striking. And Dernhelm wins the strike off. That is not good for the Witch King. We'll let him set the bar. He's got four attacks on the charge. He gets the six. So Dernhelm is three attacks, two for Eowyn, one for Merry. Only gets a four high, but she is in range of Gamling's banner. Still a four. 
and she doesn't have enough might. She is left with just one after that strike. Oh no, she didn't spend for a strike because it was death. She goes up to a six using two points of might, taking her to zero and Mary to zero, but she has won the fight. And she then makes a series of strikes against the Witch King. Both she and Mary are strength three, not on the charge, so no bonuses, wounding on sixes by fours. Two sixes there. Two fours will put a massive amount of pressure on Mordor here. One, that's enough. That's one wound on the Witch King, who rolls fate and saves it. So his first fate, and he has saved it. He backs away and lives to fight another day. And that is the end of the turn. A very tense combat, that one. Let's roll for turn five priority. And this time it goes to Mordor. Start of the move phase with evil priority. Gambling is calling a heroic move that will allow him to get pretty much all these riders, allowing them to crash into these guys and importantly, stop the Witch King's charge. Grishnak is going to spend his second point of might to counter. Saving the Witch King's might for combat. We'll do with a roll off. One, two, three, evil. And it's a two. So evil are going first. And that is not a good result for Rohan, but at least once the uh, forces of evil have charged in, they'll be able to counter charge, as Gambling will no doubt not call with me. Krishnak's heroic move. He has just shimmed across. He's unable to really do anything, but he's shouted with me and all these guys are going to move. But importantly, the Witch King. And on his way in to combat, he's going to just do a one dice transfix on Theoden. And it goes off on a three. That is enough to make it stick. He's gonna re-roll it probably to a one. He's going to re-roll it. He's chasing those high numbers. Two of one. Called it. What a waste. But uh, it was it was possibly worth the gamble. So he goes in to Eowyn and Theoden. End of the movement phase, and it is carnage. Krishnak's heroic move, as we've seen, has allowed the Witch King and a lot of guys to charge in there. And then with Gamling's heroic move, he elected not to call with me and allow Mordor to move the rest of their units, which they did, charging in. Couldn't really reach very many cavalry. Gorbag managed to get in. And this chap here has been charged, and this guy by the war rider, but then Rohan countercharged. The ones with the markers have all charged. Over here, the uh, archer squad have just tucked in. They're uh, they're not really willing to chain, exchange shots with uh, with five point archers. It's not worth risking their horses, and importantly, they're coming in to defend the objective, which is where all of the points in this game come from, or at least the majority. So that is movement. Mordor still struggling to get in towards that objective. They need to kill a lot of cavalry to start opening up the uh, the entrance. And realistically, they're gonna have to go around because this is just a big stone wall of heroes. Although in the combat phase, the Witch King is gonna do his best to break through. First off though, it's shooting. These guys have a shot here, but uh, he is now behind cover. He legged it at full speed. Can they kill him? They have moved, although it makes no difference there. So four up in the way, one gets through. Wounding on fives. No, they don't get him. And then over here, this chap is gonna shoot into combat. 
He's gonna try and take out one of those Royal Guard. He's moved. He's gonna roll a two, because he always does. Yep, there we go, there's the two. He, uh, he is cursed, I think. What if we roll again? Is it still gonna be a two? No, it's a six. Though that is, uh, is wildly cheating, but that really does go to show that he is cursed. He can roll a six when he doesn't need to. So that is all of evil shooting. Good have in the ways for uh, everything. Everything's in combat. Oh, except this chap. Who can throwing spear him? He's moved full, but the throwing spear can still be thrown. Hitting on fives. And it's a one. So that is the end of shooting. Let's go into the combat phase. Start of the combat phase. And Theoden and the Witch King are both heroic striking. And Aema and Dernhelm who you can hopefully just about see under the wings, are calling heroic combats. Dernhelm is only fighting one, a spear support, but he uh, doesn't count in terms of the heroic combat. If she can just kill one, she'll be able to help out against the Witch King. Aema, if he can kill those two, again, can help out against the Witch King. He'll be able to charge just outside of that guy's control zone. So that's two heroic combats. Go back up there. He's not going to bother calling. He can't really go anywhere. All he could do is charge in and wait to get surrounded by cavalry next turn. So he is just going to uh, to wait this one out. So the heroic combat will do Dernhelm against the two there. She's three attacks, not on the charge. Easily wins it. Mordor really, really wishing that the banner was with the Witch King. So, needing sixes to kill. Oh, doesn't do it. And she regenerated that one point of might from Gambling's banner, but unfortunately spent it on the combat. So it's just strength three for both herself and Mary. That uh, does not go off. So they back away and she will just move her ever so slightly back from the Witch King so that we remember she's not in combat. She has failed her task of getting close to the king and saving Theoden, but can Aema do it? So he needs, ooh, to roll high. He's done okay there on a five. Gather up some dice for evil. Evil have four attempts at getting a six here and bottle it. Aema's fight value saves the day there and he is needing fives to kill these. Oh, and he does it. He kills them both. So these guys back away. Those two are dead. And then Aema's courage test, nice and easy. He charges into the Witch King. Not the end of the world there, but would have been nice to have Dernhelm in as well. So we'll come back to that combat. We'll come around to these fights over here. We'll do this one here. It's a charging Royal Guard against a shielding Spearman. Spearman bottles it, but he is in banner range. Not enough. So there we go. The six absolutely splatters that orc. We then have three on one. That guy did not charge. So they're looking to kill him and they get the six Gamling's banners miles away. So the one Moranon is wounding on fives. No, nope. and then sixes from the Numenorians. Nothing. Rerolling ones though, because they do outnumber. Still nothing. And he backs away. That's not a good result there for evil. They really, really need to start killing cavalry. We then have a one on one. And that cavalry that Mordor need to kill is Rohan Cavalry, not Mordor Cavalry. Hopefully they've not cursed themselves. A draw, so they lose on the draw. But Banner to a six. He is, it's hard to see on camera, but in real life he's miles away from uh, the Rohan Banner. So the Wargrinder does win and it's fives to kill. And he gets him the high strength of the Warg there, bringing down a Royal Guard. We'll then do Gorbag and Friend against a Royal Guard. And we'll use this dice for uh, Gorbag's Friend. And Gorbag's Friend and Gorbag there getting sixes. Clear away these spare dice. Rolling to kill. Both of them kill. That is good work there from Gorbag. 
this might not go quite so well, but uh, hopefully Evil can do some work on this corner. So we've got this one here. It's a charging Royal Guard against a Shielding Orc and a Shielding Orc pushes him back. There we go. And then another Shielding here. Grab these dice for it. Oh dear, catapult that one. Oh, it's a draw. Is he within 12 of Theoden? Let's grab something to measure with. Theoden is in 12. So on the uh, being within 12 of Theoden, he has plus one fight value. So he's fight value five, which is higher than that chap there. So rolling to kill fives because he's strength four on the charge. Gets in with his first set of double strikes and he goes down fairly even over here. Although the Mounted Royal Guard worth a lot more points than the uh, Orcs of Numenorians that they've been killing. But the fighting is not over. We have probably the most important fight of the game here. The Witch King could well die if he loses this. First off though, let's do the strike off. Theoden against the Witch King. And it's a draw. Oh, this is going to be tense. So we'll do Theoden first. Two attacks. He's out of might. He's only got a five. We then have Ayama, who gets a five as well. Banner reroll. No. So a five high for the forces of good. Can the Witch King do it? He's got a five. So it's a draw. Ayama does have one point of might and he's going to spend it. And so will the Witch King. So Ayama, Theoden, Dernhelm and the Witch King all out of might now. However, Rohan do have that banner and this is an important fight. So it's the roll off. They've both got to six and they're both fight nine. So a one, two or three, evil gets it. And on a four plus, it's good. It's a four plus. Rohan win the fight. So the Witch King backs away. And then Theoden makes his strikes. Theoden wounding on sixes, doesn't do it. And he's out of mind. But wounding on fives, being strength five on the charge. It is, oh, in fact, no, sixes. It's still sixes for AMA. With his three attacks. Oh, <laughs> the tabletop rambling dice. Two wounds on the Witch King. This could be a dead Witch King now. He's got two points of fate left. And he saves them both. The Witch King down to zero fate survives. That was absolutely brutal. That is the end of the turn. And the Witch King is reeling. Let's roll for turn, possibly six priority. And again, it goes to evil. Start of the turn and evil have priority. So gambling is calling a heroic move. The Witch King, still a massive threat, but he is bleeding now. No fate left, one wound. He is ripe for the killing. So gambling is calling a heroic move. They also need to stop this tide here. They've got the central objective, they need to keep it. Gorbag is going to counter. He's still fresh, he's spent no might so far. And this war grider will be able to roll round and stop the heroic combat going off from gambling. So a one, two, three, it's evil. Four plus, it goes to good. This is gonna be a six though, as these dice are magic. Oh, it's not a six, but it's enough. It's a five and gambling is going first. End of the movement phase, and that was a very successful heroic move there from Gamling, forgetting his name for a moment. He managed to get all except two, who then just charged and got everything, or at least as much as they possibly could. The guys with the markers are on the charge. This guy as well, but there's no bonus against cavalry, except of course his uh, plus one strength. 
they've been quite badly countercharged, although here this one hasn't been countercharged. And not only that, but he got a six to hit, followed by a six to wound with his throwing spear, taking a wound off Gorbag. He's now looking to trample him down. If he wins the fight, he, uh, he could well one-shot Gorbag there, and that would be a big blow to Mordor. These two have been tagged. Just Mordor trying to stop the cavalry from overwhelming them, as uh, infantry are very vulnerable to cavalry. Here, with the Witch King attacked by both Dernhelm and Theoden, Aemer ploughed forward to protect Aemer from, uh, from Theoden, rather, from getting anything, uh, pulling him away. Aemer has then been countercharged by the Wargrider to take off his cavalry bonus and Grishnak, who can strike. Over here, we have this royal guard who dismounted and moved in so that uh, these two wouldn't be able to get onto Dernhelm, although we forgot them to, uh, to move them. So they charge forward. And then over here, these two charged into this guy. These guys ran up, but then the uh, lone rider who wasn't engaged in the heroic counter charge then. There's been uh, a lot of to and fro in the movement with evil moving and good and swinging back as the different heroics go off. And that then brings us to the end of the move phase. It's, uh, it's looking like absolute carnage at the moment, but there are a couple of shots to do. Shoot phase, we have these three trackers and they're actually gonna shoot into the Witch King's combat. This could prove very, very stupid, but the Witch King is engaged with two high power heroes and they need to lose their horses or even better their lives, because if they get dismounted, they won't be able to strike. So three shots, two hits, because they've not moved. So this is a big one, up or down, one, two or three, they'll shoot their own leader in the back. Oh, one hits the Witch King, but one goes through. So we'll do the Witch King one, up or down. It hits the mount, and that is because it's a monstrous mount. So it's only a five or six to hit the rider, and it doesn't wound, because it's defense six. So then the one that goes through, it's a randomized one, two, three. It's the King, four, five, six. It's Eowyn and Merry. Hits Eowyn and Merry. Does it hit their horse or them? It hits one of them. So again, another randomization. One, two, or three, it's Eowyn. It's Eowyn, which is a shame because Mary's only one wound, but it's no wound anyway. All of those dice to uh, roll a one when it actually counts. That is all of the shooting as the tracker up there has thrown himself into combat. So we'll get stuck into the combat phase. In the combat phase, Theoden is calling a heroic strike against the Witch King. And the Witch King is out of might, so he's unable to respond. Returning that favour, Krishnak is using his last point of might to heroic strike against Aemer, who is unable to respond. Up here, we have Gorbag, who is against an even fight value rider of Rohan, who could splatter him into the, into the dirt. He is going to gamble, and he is not going to call a heroic strike. This could be a massive mistake, but equally, Holding on to that might to uh, try and win the fight might be more sensible. And even better, if he is able to survive without spending might, that's heroic moves to try and break these ponies. So that's all the heroics. We'll start off though with the more generic combats. And we'll do this one here, it's a two on one. And the uh, dismounted rider is gonna shield. Oh, it's sixes across the board. He is not a cavalry on the charge, so he's not got the plus one fight value with uh, the 12 inches of Theoden, and he is outclassed by the Numenorian. So he is only defense four because he retains his bow. Being a rider, he's not allowed to drop it with that shield. He uh, doesn't get the defense bonus for having a bow, so it's forced to wound from that strength four Moran, and not enough. Fives from the Black Numenorian. Not enough, and he backs away. We then have another two on two, as that is a charging Royal Guard. 
who flops it just two twos against two threes. So the uh, the Moranon will need fives and kills him. That's a blow there to that flank for Rohan. We then have ooh, a lot of fights up here. Let's come round and see what we've got. We have this one-on-one -on -one first. The Orc charged in there. All the dice are on the, uh, the wrong side. There we go. So a one-on-one. -on -one. Apologies about the poor lighting. It's, uh, it's a thunderstorm outside, so the lighting's very, very dismal in here. So a one-on-one -on -one goes to good. And he hasn't got the fight value anyway, so there's no point bannering it. So it goes to good. He's not on the charge. He needs a six. Not enough. Pushes him back. We then have here six against the charging Royal Guard. The Royal Guard does have the fight value, so he can win that if he gets the uh, a draw or higher. But let's set the bar with evil. That's six dice, and they get the six. You get pretty much one of everything there. Can the Royal Guard survive? No, not on a four. He loses, and he takes a lot of hits. We'll do the four. Moranon strikes, two uh, Moranon's doubled, needing fives, and they get three sixes. They absolutely wipe him out. And he goes down. We then have the one-on-one, -on -one, that walk rider. He killed a uh, Rohirrim last time. Can he do it again? Yes. The banner still too far away, but no wound there. He should have gone for his horse. He'd have killed him. The reason that uh, Gambling is so far away is he had to be central to all of the guys that were uh, caught in his heroic. Otherwise, some of them would have been uh, caught with their pants down. We'll then come to uh, a very, very important fight here. It is the Charging Rohirrim against Gorbag and Friend. So the Charging Rohirrim setting the bar at a five. Gorbag needs to win this or he's dead. Oh, that's not good. He's lost. We'll re-roll for the banner. A Gorbag dice. He has lost. That is not good there. Effectively four dice to win the fight and he loses to the Rohirrim there. He has got might left, but on a two high, nothing he can do. So the Rohirrim with double strikes is going to try and wound him. Wounding on fives because he's strength four on the charge. Oh, and that's another wound. That is two wounds now because of that throwing spear. So Gorbag has one fate. If he fails this, he's dead. And it's a one. Gorbag with two might left is dead. A one, the only dice on the fate there that would kill him. And obviously he rolls it. Gorbag is dead that is not good there for mordor rohan now are, uh, are putting a lot of pressure on mordor we'll roll this next one one on one and evil get it to moranon so fives to kill oh a four not quite then a one on one the tracker oh he loses the fight and the banners out of range so it's strength three on three, so force to wound the tracker. Oh, and the tracker survives. That's nice. He points at him and says, Oi, what are you doing? So that is all of the combats around here. We'll then come across to the, uh, the big combats over here. First off, then, we have the Royal Guard that dismounted against a Black Numenorian and a Moranon. He's going to shield and win the fight there on the five. Pushing them back. So he pushes them back. And then we have Ayama against Krishnak and friends. Krishnak strikes to fight seven. That's high enough. We'll let Ayama set the bar. On the six. So Ayama is putting the, uh, the pressure on there. We then have one, two, three, four guys and... Grishnak needing a six to win and they get it. They get it twice over actually. And they have trapped Ayama. So Ayama there 
trapped against that fight's evil priority. That's why they've done it in this order. And now they are going after him. So this chap, first of all, is going to put double strikes onto the horse. It's an armored horse. He's strength four. He needs fives to kill it. And he doesn't. So the next guy is going to go after the horse as well and bottle it. But re-rollable ones with the army bonus, they definitely outnumber Rohan. And that is a kill. Now, Aima can fate it, but then they're just gonna keep going after his horse and the horse is less armored. He is gonna allow the horse to go down and then the rest of the strikes will be on him, but at least he's then got two fate for that and he is a lot tougher. So then we have four strikes plus four from Grishnak, which is 10 strikes, all on AMA needing sixes. There's no might left on Grishnak, so we'll roll them all together. Oh, that is two sixes there, two wounds. The horse would have been annihilated on that and all of that, so it would have gone down anyway. And so, oh, in fact, re-rolling ones, We'll re-roll that, looking for the six, no. So two wounds on Aema. He's gonna roll two fates and save both. So that's Aema out of fate, but he is still on full wounds. We'll just close off ever so slightly and we'll put uh, Aema's dismount down. Finally then, we have Theoden and Dernhelm against the Witch King. Theoden is striking. See if he gets high enough to faint, and he does. He's fight 10, so he's going to faint. Even if he uh, he bottles it completely on the faint, he'll still be higher fight value. And then we'll uh, we'll let the Witch King set the bar. He's three attacks. He's only got a five. He is, uh, is fairly cooked here. And double sixes to win the fight from Theoden. He is on the warpath. So he's won the fight, the Witch King backs away. Theoden on the charge, he's needing sixes, no wounds. And then also sixes on the charge from Dernhelm, no wounds. That is a poor showing there from Rohan who really should have killed the Witch King there. The Witch King survives to, uh, to live another day, that is Impressive from Mordor, poor from Rohan. End of the movement phase, and miraculously, the uh, Witch King is still alive, although Gorbag has been slain with two might in the bank. He just rolled so, so poorly that he couldn't even might it against that rider. He's dead, leaving no might on the board for evil, and Gambling's infinite might banner in the middle. This is going to be an uphill struggle now for Mordor. This will be a very important priority roll. And it goes to evil. So Gambling will, of course, call a heroic move. End of Gambling's heroic move. Gambling has moved up here so that he's still within three of Theoden, allowing him to regenerate my next turn. This turn, however, it was Dernhelm regenerating one to charge and strike against the Witch King. Third time lucky to bring him down. They have then just charged in. Aema uh, just tying things up, protecting Theoden and just charging in here to tie up this entrance onto the objective. This guy failed a courage test, but his friend made it in. This guy, has been unable to move, or at least unable to do anything sensible. So he's staying still to hold that doorway. And this chap over here can't really do anything other than stand still and get ready to uh, try and fight for his life. So that's all the uh, guys in range of that heroic move. It's now Mordor's move. Mordor priority. So after the heroic move, which has seen a lot of guys tied up, the rest have managed to charge in on Rohan's remaining forces. Just tying them up here and here, but then trying to overwhelm and break through this little entrance there. 
and importantly here, four guys in range and also swamping that Paul Rohirrim to try and break through, or at the very least, push Rohan to their breaking point, trying to hold all of the entrances to this central objective. The trackers are moving up to take advantage of that and put even more pressure on. They thought about staying still and shooting into the Witch King's combat again, but it's just not worth the risk of killing the Witch King. So that is how we're looking. There's no shooting, we'll go into the combat. So we'll start off with the four guys against the shielding Rohirrim over here. And Rohan definitely lose that on two twos. He is getting uh, double strikes from the Moranans wounding on fours. Amazingly survives it. However, three ones are all re-rollable and they all kill the Mordor army bonus there. Absolutely butchering that poor Rohirrim. We'll, uh, we'll come back to these fights here with the Witch King. We'll come round to uh, the fights over there. We'll gather up some dice as we go. And then we'll see what we have over here. We've got this charging Rohirrim against four. Do this one here. Oh, he has lost, but he is in three inches of the banner. And I thought that was going to be a six then. He loses. So these are all fives. And he goes down on two sixes. That breaches there the gap. Although with no might left, Mordor are struggling to take advantage of these openings. We then have a three on one. The Rohirrim did charge, so he'll have the extra strength, but he doesn't get the extra dice because he had to charge cavalry. And it's three on one, and he has lost. He, however, is too far away from the banner. So he has lost that, and it's fives across the board. Re-rolling ones. He survives, and he backs away, nicely blocking that off. That's uh, not so good there for Mordor, who really needed to open that up. Again, another br potential breach, that rider who didn't charge against two Moranans. The Moranans win. The banner's too far away for Rohan. And they need fives, and they kill him on the six. This could be a broken Rohan. If Mordor continue their killing, we'll do this one-on-one. -on -one. It's a tracker. Can he do it? He wins. He needs a five for the horse, which is more sensible, or a six on the rider. He's going to go for it. It's a six. The little tracker that could has killed a royal guard. We then have another royal guard against the Moranen. The Royal Guard wins and fails to kill, pushing that Moranen back. That little tracker, what a legend. So that is all of the, uh... oh, in fact, no, there's this one here, it's two on one. Mordor charged, oh, and they lose. That banner is gonna be out of range. So he tries to strike, but fails. So now that is the end of the, uh, the fights, except for the big ones over here. First off then, we'll do the Royal Guard just in there against two. And again, he is going to shield, just needs to hold that flank. He has drawn the fight, fives apiece. So rolling to see who it goes to, and it goes to good once again. So they back away, we'll just push them back and then We'll do the Witch King last. We'll do this fight. It's Grishnak and Co against Aemer. Is he going to shield or is he just going to go for it? He's going to go for it. He has the fight value. So we'll let Evil set the bar. There's three Moranans plus Grishnak. And they do get the six. They're putting the pressure on Aemer. But he gets sixes as well. He absolutely loves it. And he is going for... A normal guy first, kills him, 2-1 Grishnak, puts a wound on Grishnak. What an absolute monster. Grishnak backs away, these guys back away, and then he is killed. Aemer, not, uh, not pulling any punches. We'll then do Theoden, 2, even though he's on the charge, because he's against cavalry. 
He wins and he's going to put one strike on the rider. Nope. And then the other strike on the rider. And no. So that war rider backs away. We then have the final fight, which is Eowyn and Merry against the Witch King. Desperate to protect Theoden from the power of the Witch King. She has heroic struck. Don't know if we declared it, but she did. And wow, fight 10. So she will faint. Uh, I am assuming they can both faint. Who knows? Um, so that is three attacks on three. We'll let the Witch King set the bar on just a four. And oh, it's also a four. Obviously with the fight value, she wins, but that is so heartbreaking there for the Witch King who could have, uh, have won that if he'd not bottled it. Needing sixes to kill him. And she's bottled it as well, using her regenerated might for the strike means that she's got none left in the tank to kill him. The Witch King losing more will, but still alive. Another tense round of combats sees Rohan's grip on the centre start to wane, although the Witch King is one bad roll away from death. We'll roll for turn possibly seven priority. And again, it goes to evil. That is not the result that Rohan need. They are now going to have to choose between a heroic strike or a heroic move. And it's not really a choice, to be honest. It's going to have to be a move from gambling. There's no might left. So with the uh, banner, gambling regenerates onto himself and then calls a heroic move. After that heroic, gambling still right in the middle, allowing all of the uh, cavalry to move around. This guy passed his courage test, holding them up, and this chap charged into the war rider, just holding off that gap there. Dernhelm has charged off this way to try and kill those infantry and reduce Mordor's numbers on the objective, because down here, the uh, king has charged into Grishnak. This random has charged the war rider. Aema has decided he's going to tank it out with the Witch King. And this little warrior that could threw his throwing spear and killed the Black Numenorian. And he's now in on that spearman. So that is the heroic move. It's now evil's move. End of the move phase. And after the heroic move, Mordor have just gone in and swamped everything. The trackers have advanced, putting as much pressure on this side as possible. The spearmen have uh, gone round to still spear support, but at the sides, just to get uh, in as close into that objective as possible. They're, uh, they're well within six there. Things looking quite tense now for Rohan, although with the infinite might on that banner, they are still, uh, still in with a chance. There's no shooting. We'll get stuck into the combat. And we'll start off with Dernhelm. She's on the charge, which is a mighty four attacks on the charge against those four. And she wins there on the six. And she is going for the kill. She needs fives to wound the Black Numenorian. So the first one, she kills. The second one, she kills. Absolutely slaughters those two trying to hold that entire section by herself. She's doing some work there. We'll then do this four on a one. Gather up some dice. So four on one. And the rider definitely loses there, the Royal Guard. So the three Moranans are going to be wounding on fives. We'll roll their first set first and they kill him they don't even need the double strikes they've brought him down that successfully takes up the top now it's looking bad for Rohan we'll come around as we do this fight here it's a one on two and on a four high evil have won fives from the Moranan kills 
that is not good and that is probably now Rohan broken there were only one or two off a moment to go we now have a three on one oh it goes to Rohan who are even fight value so with the evil banner no and that's even because he is on the charge even though he gets no charging bonus and he's within 12 inches of Thaden, so he's going after the... In fact, he's going to go after the Warg Rider, and he kills him. Does the Warg stay? Yes, because it's Courage 8. Uh, courage 2, rather, but 3 because of the army bonus. So backing away, Rider dead, but still alive, and importantly, still a model to contest that objective. We then have this charging chap against four. Grab him an extra dice. So he is on the charge with two against those four. He loses. He is in banner range and he only needs to beat a four. Can he do it? Yes. That is a six. He's one. He's wounding on fives. First guy dies and the second lives. So he pushes them back kills one of the Black Numenorians. That guy is prone. We'll uh, put a prone marker on him in a moment. That is some serious damage output there from Rohan. When they win those fights, they're just getting so severely outnumbered now that winning is difficult. Then the final few fights, we'll do this one-on-one -on -one first. They're both just gonna fight it. And it goes to good. Needing a six, no. That orc backs away. We then have a one-on-one -on -one here. It goes to evil. He is within three. And he wins the fight. He's strength four on the charge. Going after the rider, but that one definitely does it. So the warg backs away. We'll then do, we'll do, oh, we'll do Theoden first. Theoden on the charge. We'll let his, uh, his opponent set the bar though. They are uh, Krishnak and three. With only a five high. Can Theoden do it? Yes. Also a five. He wins. And he is going just to try and break as many... Uh, Mordor as possible. So it's going after the Black Numenorian. Does not kill. Again. Still doesn't kill. Although, yep, yeah, no. Strength 5 on the charge. Still not enough. And there we go. Oh, that's typical. A double 6 there. Finally brings him down. And those two are prone. We then have the Witch King against Aema. Three attacks against three attacks. And it's a draw. Six all, important roll off, one, two, three, evil. And it goes to evil. The Witch King has won. And Aemet has no fate left. So the Witch King could kill him here. He's going to rend, so he will be wounding on fours. Can he get him? In fact, no, he's gonna be wounding on threes. Threes with this rend. Or if he hurls, in fact, if he hurls, he will take Theoden off his horse. That could be quite a good move. Or even just to barge and bail out. We'll come back uh, once he's decided what he's going to do. We're back in and the Witch King is going to hurl. He's going to be hurling regardless of how far he goes. He's going to take these two off the horses. It's not the most lethal option, but with 25 mil bases, these guys are going to be able to uh, hold this space a lot more difficultly. That was very poorly phrased. It will be more difficult to defend when they're on these smaller bases, at least uh, in terms of physically blocking the space. They'll be able to shield, which makes them a bit tougher, but that's what he's gonna do. So how far does he throw him? Just one inch plus the strength difference. So three inches, he's easily gonna clip him. So he's going to take a, uh, an initial strength six, which wounds him, and then two strength threes. Ooh, two wounds. That's two wounds off. 
uh, off Aema. And then he's going to inflict two strength threes on Theoden. One for being hit, and then the other for being forcibly dismounted. Counters rolling a one on the Throne Rider. Oh, and he takes a wound, which he's going to fate and saves it. So Theoden loses a fate and his horse. And then that chap there takes the two as well and dies. So that is an effective hurl. And he moves back three inches. So there he's prone, as is Theoden. The Witch King, not only is he surviving, but he's now actually starting to do some work. That is impressive for the zero fates, zero might Witch King. End of the move phase. Things looking a little bit more dire for Rohan now. Dernhelm still on the warpath. And these two still valiantly holding the objective back. But Mordor are just swarming all over that objective now. And with both Theoden and Aema on the ground, they really, really need priority. Let's roll. And again, it goes to evil. That is unfortunate there for Rohan. They do have the heroic move from Gambling, although it means Gambling yet again has to just stay in the center and do nothing in order to allow all of the guys within six inches of him to charge and do some work. So we'll come back after that heroic move. We should also point out as well that Rohan are now broken. So at the end of this turn, they then will start to roll the dice each turn now. We'll roll to see if the game ends. And on a one or two, it ends. On a three plus, it continues. Gambling calling that heroic move. He's bodyguarded to Thaden, so he doesn't need a courage test. End of the move phase. The heroic move from Gambling allowed the two riders here to charge. And in fact, they both have the charge bonus um, because that's no longer cavalry. It's just a, an infantry when it's just a walk. So they have both charged. Dernhelm charged. And then here, Theoden picked on the warg to stop it getting a uh, charge bonus, but has then been surrounded. Aema charged into uh, Grishnak while he's still prone. And the uh, very brave Royal Guard charged into the Witch King and has then been counter-charged. The trackers have all moved up, ready to take shots into that combat. No one joined the combat. They allowed that Spearman just to, uh, to take the hit. But importantly, from up there and around the back, a horde of orcs and evil men have charged through and are now within six inches of the central objective, hoping to finally get uh, Gambling into combat and hopefully bring him down and uh, surround these two riders who have successfully held back the Mordor horde. So before we go into the fights then, We've got four archers shooting into Dernhelm's combat. They've all moved, uh, which means they all miss on a, uh, a four. They normally hit on a four, but moving into five. So no shots. That was quick. We'll then do the combat. So we'll start off with Dernhelm. We'll give Rohan a, uh, a good one to start with. Can she do it? Yes, she can on the six. And then rolling to wound the first one, needing fives, no. Yes, and then her remaining strikes. Oh, in fact, there's only one. So she has butchered him. He's dead. One step closer to breaking Mordor. But at this point, it's looking like that's unlikely. We've got then here a four on two. Rohan on the charge. Ooh. Draw the fight. He is in range of Theoden. So the rider on the charge is fight value four. So it's a draw. And it goes to good. He is going after the terror guys. He doesn't kill the first one. But he does kill the second. So he's killed him. Oh dear. He backs away prone. We'll put prone marker on him. And he is prone as well in fact. And that's the dead chap. We'll then do this one. It's a two on two, although the Numenorian can't fight in uh, the combat phase. 
Hey, can't wound rather. So again, it's another draw. One, two or three, it's evil. And that is the five for good. So first strike kills. These two are unstoppable. Knocking everything flying and killing them all. They have done incredibly well there, holding that line. We then come to these fights here. We've got the Witch King against that chap, and he is going to stab. Because if you can kill the Witch King, that would just be incredible. And realistically, he's probably going to die anyway. So, oh, he's done his best on the six, but he's not got the fight value. He loses. So the Witch King is just going to rend him and completely shreds that Royal Guard. But he does lose another will. He's only got four will remaining now, the Witch King. He's fought that many fights and cast some spells at the beginning. So we then have Grishnak, who is going to shield because he's on the floor. Why not? Uh, against Ayama. And Grishnak wins. Well done, Grishnak. So he stands... And he pushes Ayama back. Dear me, that's the opposite of standing, but he has got rid of the prone marker. So he stands, and then Theoden. Now Theoden does have the fight value, but he doesn't have the stones. He's going to shield. Ooh, to just a five. He's against three. Who get the six? Theoden, at least he shielded and gave himself the best possible hope. But these now, a double strike, strength four. Still wounding on sixes. Oh, and there's a wound. That is not good. That stayed in, down to one wound as he fated off a wound when he uh, fell off his horse. Theoden is in a bad way there. End of the turn and it is, uh, it is not looking too good for Rohan. They still have some punch left in them with all their heroes alive, but they've just been unable to kill the Witch King. And with that, they've been unable to, uh, to hold these hordes back. And they're now uh, quite badly outnumbered on the objective. It's... The end of the first turn in which Rohan are broken. So we do need to roll to see if the game ends. On a one or two, the game ends. On a three plus, it continues. Oh, and it's a boring one. So the game has ended and uh, we'll count up the victory points. Counting up the objectives then. And with the game ending as soon as it did, that is actually the best possible result for Rohan, who still have... Four within range of the objective. In another turn, hordes would have uh, come and joined them. So as it is, they are outnumbered on the objective, but not triple. It's only uh, two to one. So that's five victory points for Mordor rather than seven. Theoden is wounded, but he is still alive. So he only gives away one victory point making it 6-0, as the Witch King took a huge beating, but didn't lose a wound. That's uh, incredibly tough defence eight, managed to uh, keep him alive for a good few turns there, and he has not given away any victory points there to be 6-0, but then three more victory points for Evil for breaking Rohan while being unbroken themselves. They are still a good 10 models off the break point for Mordor. So that is 9-0 to Mordor. This was definitely a very, very close game. The Witch King really is on borrowed time. He should have died a good couple of turns ago and that would have allowed Rohan to, uh, to abuse the infantry of Mordor with their heroes rather than having to try and fend off against the mighty Witch King. This would have gone a very different way. The sheer numbers of Mordor definitely won this for them as they were able to get so many models on the objective and just swamp Rohan when they managed to get priority. I hope you enjoyed this game. If you've not already seen the part one for this 
tournament preparation, do check that out. I'll put a link in the description below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.